we only, as I prepare to give presentations or a talk, or even if I'm having a challenging day, so to take a pause, you know, and to breathe in and out, you know, and actually acknowledge the anxiety, the, uh, the feelings of, um, the feelings of inadequacy or the feelings of, oh, I'm going to go stutter too much and what, what, what are they going to think of me? And that allows me to, to release all of that out of me. And occasionally I'll even tell it to my audience, you know, what a, what a better way in the beginning of to say, hey, you know, I, I'm a little bit anxious because I stutter. Then that lets the power out of me, right? So uh, I'm going to do that today because even though I'm in a room full of people who stutter, I'm still anxious, right? You know, and that's okay. You know, we talk a lot about how two things that can be true at the same time, or that I could be really anxious about stuttering at, and at the same time excited to do the keynote. You know, we don't have to live in this, we don't have to live in the black and the white of where I'm extremely anxious because I stutter and I'm not going to talk. You know, we can, we can learn, learn how to bridge that. So, um, so the Friends Organization was, was, was founded in 1997 by Lee Cazzano and John Allback. And let's just give a round of applause. Emails so from 
Lee and the friends of community and that they were popping up doing a virtual virtual hangout for kids who stutter and teens who stutter and parents. And then the next one I would see would be a workshop that was led by adults who stutter. And then there was another one popping up. And all of a sudden it was like, you know, provide, figuring out how to provide support to people who stutter and their families through the pandemic. And we sort of learned a lot, didn't we? You know, about how we can make more connections through, through, throughout the year with not having to just attend the conferences and the workshops so that we, we can actually get on our get on our uh, computers and connect with each other throughout the United States and throughout the world. So I you know want to take a pause again and acknowledge that to Lee and to Heather and all the rest of you all who did that. This year. Bring it back to me because you're here to hear my story, right? So, um, and I love to share my story, you know, through the hardships and the challenges, but through that, all, you know, through all of that came of the freedom and the peace and the love and the uh, the joy of the life, you know. But it's important to remember where we came from, you know, and acknowledging of the challenges that are still here today. So, what so one of the first things I'm going to take you back to is a, is a recent thing. So, so my wife and I, we have the pleasure of be, be, being with foster parents for a six-year-old. Um, since I say it, you probably have heard that name a lot <laughs> over these past couple of days. Even if you haven't met in person, you've probably heard us across the room to say, Isaiah, Isaiah, come over here. Um, he's up with the children who stutter right now. He um, he didn't understand stuttering too much. I asked him about my stuttering, and he looked at me like I don't know what you're talking about. You know, so so kids, I mean, they're they're amazing, right? You guys are amazing. Now, you know, and I feel really accepted by him. He's never once has said to me. Got to hurry up and read in that book. All those who know with kids, you can read three, four, or five, so you probably didn't care how long it took to read the book, right? <laughs> uh, but also that, you know, he, he's never, he's impatient in a lot of areas, but not impatient with my stutter. You know, so it just, just makes you, you know, things so, so, so one night, um, well, not a lot of, a lot of nights, we're spent reading this book, Spider Man, right? Who knows what Spider Man is? Yeah. <laughs> Raise your hand, so who knows what Spider Man is? Right. <laughs> so there was a page I came across and I read it. And um, so it says, when you have the power to help people, you just have to find it within yourself to do it. When, Great power comes great responsibility. So I made the choice and I chose to be a hero. So that actually comes out of, that actually comes out of the Miles of Morales one. So I picked up the wrong book when I left the room, but Miles of Morales, you saw the movie. Anyone see the Miles of Morales Spider Man? How many guys are you? All right, a few of you all. But you know, I read this and the next night I would read it again. Next night, next night I would read it again, and you know, I, I, uh, you know, I have a choice every day, you know, whether, whether to come out of myself, you know, and be who I am, you know, and stutter openly, and then I also have a choice at times to crawl into the bed and say, I don't, I don't want that responsibility today, you know, and today I mostly choose to be out. You know, to be out in my life with with who I am. You know, and it's a lot of responsibility. You know, all of us in this room, the more educated that you get about stuttering, the more that you know, the more responsible that we are as far as being advocates in the community and helping other kids, helping other kids who stutter and adults and parents. So um, if, if you haven't got a copy of that, uh, the Miles on Morales book. It, it only costs like three ninety nine. It's a good read, so, uh, so, so check that out. Um, 
So I'm going to take you back to when I began stuttering as a child. So, so I bounced, so I bounced off, of, off, off the syllables, had some hesitation, and prolonged a little bit more than average on on consonants. You know, I don't really believe it bothered me too much at that point, right? Um, that um, that the response so that I got from other people, and I clearly remember the period of time where I don't know who pulled me aside at school, but they said I had to go to speech therapy. It's like, okay, well, that, you know, I don't remember too much, but I remember that so started going to speech therapy. Um, you know, my dad stuck. You know, he wasn't able to talk with me about it. And the more I think about it as we go along, you know, he kind of comes from the Joe Biden generation, you know, of where it was a thing of the past. You know, he had his challenges, and I'm sure he probably didn't have too many people to talk with. He persevered. You know, he went in the Army. He, uh, he came out. He, uh, he met my mom. You know, he got a job with the city as an engineer. And, and he raised his four kids, right? And he, and he did a great job. He did a great job. And as far as the stuttering, you know, it that wasn't. And he still stuttered. You know, I was a little kid. You know, when you're a little kid. You look up and I'm like, I caught him in one. You know, he, he does stutter. It's not just my imagination. But he he did what he did to be able to move ahead. You know, to be able to move ahead and live his life as a dad, as a father, get a father or wife. I'm a husband, a provider, right? You know, but it still hurt. You know, it still hurt. You know, I would, I would have loved to look back and just have my dad just go put his arm around me and be like, "Hey, you know, I said that too. You know, so it's all good." You know, but he did the best he can, and my mom did as well. Um, you know, they, they, um, when I listened to yesterday in the fishbowl workshop, you know, the best thing that parents can do. It is so we get your children the support that they need. Of course, we talk about the speech there, but sure, but that whole other part, you know, the support part, um, you know, that they can be around other children who stutter, you know, being around adults who stutter, and so people go see, hey, kid's gonna be all right, you know, and that, um, you know, I also think about, uh, I work in the field of addiction treatment, and you know, there's, there's, um, you have your alcoholism and your addiction, right? And there's good treatments now, really great treatments, evidence-based treatments that can get you, you know, from the detox, you know, to either recovery, doing it, you know, getting the therapy. But the key to addiction treatment is a community. The 12-step meetings where people way beyond after they go through treatment that it's encouraged to find a, find, find a support community. And that could be in a church, that could be in the rooms of 12-step uh, meetings. And, you know, I look at stuttering, the same with, with all of, with a lot of um, differences that people go through, whether it's a diabetes, and you can get treated for your diabetes, but you gotta find a support group. You know, you gotta find a couple people you, you could talk with who, really get you, right? Um, so, um, you know, a couple other things, just being able to love your children exactly the way they are, right? And that's why they're here, right, parents? And, um, you know, and SLPs as well, you know, not, not making it a taboo or a bad thing and like, you know, it's okay to stutter openly, um, you know, and to celebrate all the other characteristics of that children and adults have and said, there's a lot more to me than my seven, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more to me, you know, and it was beautiful once I started to realize that, you know, I had a really wonderful speech teacher in, in elementary school, and this was in the 80s, you know, when information about treatment was, was very limited. Um, her good friend was John Hallback. They didn't know each other through the, through the stuttering community, though. They knew each other through, through, through the civil rights, the disability movement. And that's how the two of the, 
them connected, right? It, so, so then I come along, and my speech teacher is Roseanne Trusinski, which which she had us call her Mrs. S. Um, and she didn't know too much. She didn't know too much about stuttering, but she knew a lot about the human condition. You know, and she knew not to harm. You know, and that um, she, um, she, uh, she, she, of course, had me do the DAF, you know, you bring it all the way up to 10 and learning how uh, my name is Nora. And boy, was that fun, right? <laughs> so I left the speech room and she used to bring my little brother Paul in and he would. Be in the speech room with us, and she'd be, you know, my best friend, Adora. She would come in, so she understood the holistic approach of, like, you know, she, she, and I would talk with her way later on. And I wish I could have done more, you know. I wish, you know, you, you didn't harm me, you know, and and you helped. Um, you know, I would watch the other kids um, speak with ease, right? And it, you know, it just. It just tore me up inside. You know, I watched my friends who speak with me used to make jokes and talk in class, give presentations, and they appeared at me. You know, and um, you know, I could not go bear the sound of, of my stuttering. You know, and gradually over time I just didn't want to talk anymore. You know, and that was all me inside. Because as I just said, I had a couple of people in my in my life who were really in my corner, but it shows how powerful the stuttering is, right? How um, even when you do have a support group like this, that you can leave here this weekend and still feel isolated, you know? And those are things that I think kids and teenagers, you guys have to talk about. Um, you know, things I remember was in the classroom, the way that students were often instructed to take turns and going around the room and reading a paragraph, right? You all, you know, and I would go carefully, go calculate how long it would take to be my turn, right? You know, and then about two people before, or maybe about one and a half, that I would carefully go get up out of my chair and head towards the back. You know, and that that was the answer to not having to talk, right? Um, the avoidance of patterns with with class participation really, really escalated in junior high, you know, and I stopped speech therapy at that time. It was a different speech therapy, I'm a blesser, but, you know, junior high was time to move on, yeah, for, for my experience, you know, I, I, um, you know, I didn't go back to speech therapy until quite later on, but, um, the, um, you know, I started experiencing the first anxiety attacks while in junior high. I didn't know what those were. But when the palms start sweating and the, the, the heartbeat's going and you feel sweaty and, you know, I didn't know what that was. But I, did, I wanted it just to go away. And if I didn't speak, you know, the chances of uh, that not happening were, were, were going to be reduced. You know, that because I was trying to work to avoid the humiliation of my of my stuttering in in, in classrooms, um, I I remember this one presentation in junior high that if we walked it was about three miles or so to school two miles two three miles and I walked and the whole way to school I rehearsed it I had it down it was just like you know you all you know you had it down. You know, and I get to school, I think it was in the third period or something, and I go in with a science class. And I, you know, this one I guess I had to do. Or so I got up, oh my God, I, I remember I couldn't even get out the first word. It was like, damn, but it did it so good on the way to school. She just reported it. And, right. But, but you know, those are stuff that I know. I've got people who said, or kids who said, you know, we can relate to each other. Hopefully, they can laugh about it a little bit because it certainly wasn't too funny at the time. But we can go sit down with each other and say, hey, I experienced that too. Um, you, know, the, the, you know, as I went along, going into fast food restaurants so that I would write down my order on, on, a, on a piece of 
favor of pretending oh, that I was deaf, and so I didn't have to experience the humiliation of the 14 or 15 year old behind the counter who really wanted my order quick, right? Um, you know, so th those kind of behaviors, those avoidance behaviors, but it's also your survival skills. You know, I knew how to survive. You know, and I, I, wa I was resilient. And if I wanted to get my three tacos from Taco Bell, I was going to find a way to do it. <laughs> you know, and I left there and was able to eat them and I was totally happy. You know, and so, you know, and that. That says a lot to who we are, though, the resiliency that we have to get up and keep going. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, after high school, um, high school was difficult. You know, I won't go into it too much, but you know, I found some alcohol and other stuff, and it, you know, it, it really helped in the moment. You know, it helped to ease up the anxiety. It helped to go forget about forget about things, but with all you, for those of you that did not know, but eventually it stops working, you know, and there you are, you're still having to deal with it yourself. So if anyone in this room is dealing with any challenges with alcohol and drugs, I really would like, you know, if you're not able to talk to me directly after this, you know, to get my telephone number and to connect with me, okay? Um, uh, because it only complicates things, you know, and that, uh, we do that a lot. We make things more complicated often to not deal with our pain. And that's not just with the, with the stuttering. I'm sure our adults and parents can understand, you know, how many things in our lives, uh, uh, other lives that we do that with. How am I doing on time? I don't know if you All right. So, um, so, um, so yeah, I'll continue on with just the, uh, you know, the avoidance of stuff, you know, I avoided any contact with the phone, you know, and bless this generation. I know there's a lot of stuff electronics and this or that, but honestly, you're able to text someone <laughs> <laughs> and say hi to your friends. You know, that's a blessing. We had a phone on the wall that I, I ran from that, from that phone anytime it rang, you know. Never called anyone, and if I did, I don't even know how. I, I guess we used to go in the back room. I don't know if my family saw, but we had, but we were in the back room. You'd be on the phone. I don't even know how I could got words out. When I went to one of my proms, there was a gentleman who lived across the street. I, like, I love. I went to all girls school, so the only way you can go to dance is where you had a guy. It's a little different today, but you know. But so. Um, so I remember Joey, I think that was his name. I wrote Joey a note. Will you go to the prom with me? Put it in his little mailbox. We went to the prom together. So, you know, it, it, would, it would have been a little better if I could have sent him a text and been like, hey. You know, but, but the note worked. So that was our text. Back then. Okay, so. You know, and I want to put it here too. I mean, it, it's. You know, it's a such a gift today to be able to get up here and tell you that I identify as a lesbian because that wasn't always the way, even in the study, you know, that we, you know, it's really only been in recent years, you know, where the comfortability of other people don't understand, and it's fine if you don't understand the LGBT population, but what I just want people to do is that. It, is able to talk with others about it. You know, there's a lot of things that we don't understand, right? You know, but having the willingness to talk about it with others, and, you know, and even if you don't agree with the lifestyle, that you have the ability to listen. And you know, and today, I still, I still would hesitate. And I talked to the gentleman. Unfortunately, I don't know if she's he's here today. And I, I want you to really hear this. It was much easier for me to come out as a person who is gay than to come out as a person who's done. You know, and, the, and that, you know, if you could just take a moment with that to see, you can, you can imagine, you know, how difficult it is to just, all of us exploring our sexuality and be able to talk about it and be out, but that was easier. The stuttering, it took many more years. 
many more years. You know, and that's not to say my journey, you know, on that side wasn't challenging, but not as much as this stuff. Um, society is the problem, not the area, not, you know, and it is also with stuttering, too, you know, just a lot of misinformation out there, right? So personal responsibility, right? Um, going back to Miles and Morales, right? That we are responsible today um, to be out there, you know, and choose to know to be a hero to, uh, to educate others. So, um, so, so dating and relationships were, were a challenge. They, were, they weren't impossible. You know, but at some point I went down a road of like some pretty bad destructive behaviors. Um, one, I remember going to community, enrolled in a you know, kids are supposed to go to college after high school and stuff. So, um, I, um, so I went to, I went to community college and I enrolled in an English class and, uh, went through the syllabus, I guess it wasn't on the first day, I think it was on the second day. And it said, and it said group assignment, I'm looking at group, okay, and presentation. I dropped the class the same day. <laughs> I mean, that, that just wasn't going to happen. You know, and then eventually I dropped the rest of the classes. You know, so it took me many years to get back to school, and I'll get to that in a minute. But, um, you know, I can't say that there was one moment where the light bulb went off, right? That it was like, okay, it's okay to stutter, you know, it's okay. To, but it was gradual, you know, and I was introduced to... To, to the stuttering on self-help support groups. And that was a huge part of my journey uh, to accepting of myself. You know, I did go to an, to an intensive speech therapy program out of Eastern Washington University and learned a lot, you know, learned a lot. But the best thing out of that three weeks, is that it, was pretty, it was pretty long back then, was of the nine other people I went through the group with. Imagine three weeks being able to hang out with other people who stutter. You know, so sure, I got a lot of other stuff, you know, and I learned that there were these other techniques and I was able to use them to make my study, to make my communication better. But the best thing, you know, and I'm still in touch with a lot of those, those folks today, you know, and that's, that was the beauty of that. Um, so, um, so and then I started attending the support groups. I was a chapter leader, you know, um, uh, really just really just wanted to throw myself into the stubborn community because it felt good. You know, it felt good. And I had a lot of ideas, you know, I, I that's why I just my like, no, oh, shit, can you come up with one more idea to save the world, Nora. But I, I had a lot of ideas, you know, and uh, you know, it was really exciting that the serving community. I'd be like, I want to do this, and they're like, Great, you know, I want to write a news article. Great, little did I know later on, you need volunteers. So because I was volunteering to write an article every month for the, so you get, you know, or or volunteer for workshops and stuff. And so that's such a great way to really get involved and to find your voice. You know, uh, we can say at times that people who stutter that we're we're a little overachievers. I think you know we put the bar like so high up for us. You know, at times you got to bring it down a little bit. But I think it's that we want to prove. I want to prove that hey, I can do this. You know, and so my bar has gotten a little bit more realistic lately, and we can we can talk about that later, Anne. But you know, bring it down a little bit more because you know we. You can take care of the world, but you got to take care of yourself too, and your family and your loved ones. Um, so, so I went on. To, so I got my oh, my bachelor's and my master's in social work from San Francisco State University. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. That was a journey. And so thanks for starting to clap. I remember my first junior year because I transferred from the community college. I was at the community college like for three, four years. But, you know, but I did it. You know, transferred and going to this other school. I mean, it's a big, it's a, it's a big school going on campus and thinking, how the hell am I going to do this, right? You know, I always thought, I mean, the first who said I'm a social worker, it's an oxymoron. 
no way they can go together. You know, and I figured, you know, I'll be a social worker, I'll be in the back, do administrators. So there's a lot of things. If you want to talk about the field of social work and the millions of things you can do with that degree, you can, you can catch me later. Um, but eventually, over time, I found my voice, you know, and I, I knew I needed to be the voice of the voices, you know, and it wasn't just for people who stuttered, it was for all people who were marginalized and had difficulties in other lives. And, you know, and I got my license with the state of California and um, having my license as a social worker just opened up a lot of other doors, you know. And, uh, you know, as I said, I chose a profession where I was going to be the voice of the voices, you know, and teaching them how to empower themselves. Um, you know, and I work with some of the most marginalized, looked down upon, thrown to the curb, traumatized traumatized women and children that you can imagine. And they are the most resilient, resilient human beings. You know, they get hit down and they get right back up. You know, they go to jail once again and they come out, they're gonna try treatment once again. And I work primarily in addiction treatment on that. But but I learned from them, you know, and their trauma, they're acting out and you know it's because they're hurting. You know, so if your child is acting out and uh, doing stuff, you gotta look at, okay, that behavior is not okay, but I gotta find out what's going on underneath all of it. You know, and, that, and that's the key right there. You know, so, so the, so the word, so I oversee, so I work at um, a very large healthcare provider in Los Angeles, and I, I oversee the addiction treatment programs inpatient outpatient transitional housing and working working with collaboratively with the clinic so to provide a comprehensive treatment you know the, the stuff that we all need you know it's not just the the stuttering treatment but you better be checked out by a medical doctor to make sure there isn't anything else happening with you all that could be contributing to so your depression or even um medications i could get too far but it, but how medications can interact with each other and have an effect on stuttering as well. It's just different stuff. I don't want to get too far down, but we need the same way that you need a holistic approach in addiction treatment of the work. It's the same with stuttering as well. You know, having access to see a therapist, right? Um, to, 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 see, to, see, to see a psychotherapist, you know. You know, if you need acupuncture, because that sure helps a lot. Chiropractor for me, was really such a game changer with being able to connect with them like body and not have it be like this, you know, so, so much. So, um, but I love what I do. I love what I do. And, um, you know, and I've also had the pleasure as a therapist to work, work with Dr. McGuire and Lauren McGill, who was a speech scientist pathologist in Southern California. You know, and over the years, we worked up collaboratively with collaboratively with people who stutter aware you know they may need that they mean they may need the psychotherapy over here they mean they may need the speech therapy over here and they may and they may be a, need, to be, need to be assessed medically you know and at a time you know a person who stutters they just may need to talk to a social worker for a period of time before thinking about let me go into the speech therapy or maybe they need to happen at the same time, you know. And so that work, I'm very excited as I move into. I would like it to be my last career, where that that is the model, the, the clinic approach that I would love to work in, and really would dedicate the rest of my professional career to people who stutter. So, um, so is everyone still listening? You probably got you're probably like, what is she? Stuff? Okay, so we're going to come back to the end with all of you. Um, so. So, um, but we need access to quality treatment. You know, it wouldn't be if I was up here and I think we'd talk about that, that you need access to good treatment, you know, and that, you know, it is a human rights issue, right? It, it is a human rights issue that we all here in this room need access to the healthcare, including good treatment of the stutter. You know, and if you need to be assessed for mental health or whatever else, that, you know, and those are things, you know, as I continue on in my career, whether it's working 
you know, policy or elsewhere, or research. We talked a lot about research. Research gets me, gets me excited. You know, one, it's just it's so exciting. It's, it's going to have a ripple effect on all of us here in the room. So, um, so as I um, move ahead, yeah, that, that, there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other stuff to talk about, right? Lee? But I just really want to leave you with a, with a lot of hope here. You know, I continue to find on my voice daily. You know, even though I get up here and I, uh, you know, I was really trying to throw in some more st stuttering and get it out there. But when we're at these conferences, it just, you know, the stuttering tends to reduce a lot for me. You know, and that's because I'm around other people who I don't have to, I don't have to have my part of, you know. And so please know, I may not be stuttering a, a whole lot right now, but you, you can talk to Ann afterwards how much I, study <laughs> but, uh, but you know i continue to find my voice daily i do communicate with confidence so the eye contact thing is key which has always been always been always been hard for me to keep my eye contact as i go through a lot it, because people are looks are able to look straight in to our vulnerability you know and if i look away then it's not like you're looking at me you know so those are those are things i still have to work on you know, at times I continue to feel, you know, you know, emotional about it and the vulnerability, but I talk about the challenges of the day. You know, if I have a bad day, and this is another key, key thing, yeah, I don't want to go, but the population I work with, you know how I said before that being, being a social worker and person who stutters, and I thought that was an oxymoron. And I got into I got into the field and the clients and the population I work with, whether it was from downtown LA or Malibu or to San Francisco, wherever it was, that they met me. And more times it's not, as Dr. McGuire talked about yesterday, that they thanked me for my vulnerability. You know, here I am talking with a person who just may have attempted to kill themselves or something. Right? Or they've just been diagnosed with HIV, or that they um, they have been they have been they've been, they've been homeless or incarcerated or something. And here I am, I come in the room, you know, always always being aware of my privilege too, because I work I work with a lot of people of color, and I come in, you know, as a white woman and sit down, and I know they're thinking, I know this is lady, you know, I come in and I start to stutter. Because I'm me, you know, by the end of the session, in the middle of it, we're already like this. You know, we're already connected to each other. Sometimes they're able to put it into words of the reason why they're able to build rapport with me within a matter of a few moments. You know, other times they're able to actually tell me later, hey, Laura, and when, when you told me you were a little bit anxious to, to hold on a little bit, that just made me ease up, you know, and so. You know, it is a gift. Trust me, people said a while ago, your stutter is a gift. You know, I mean, yeah, go, go take that gift. <laughs> so, but <laughs> the fact of the matter is that it is a gift to all of us here in this room. And that doesn't mean in time we're, we're not going to like our gifts, right? But, but we can't exist with it together. So, and, 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 I, and I do go coexist, so today, with know, my stuttering. You know, People joke about my tattoo on my arm that coexists. In fact, did I get it off of the bumper sticker? Well, I had it before the bumper sticker, right? <laughs> uh, but, but the coexist, sure, it's about the religion, but it's also about how do I coexist within myself, within myself, with all this, with all the conflicting stuff. You know, that I could be a person who stutters and be a successful. You know, and that I can't go coexist with my stutter, that, that we are no longer, we are no longer in a deadly duel with each other. You know, I can coexist with my stuttering, and we no longer have to be in a deadly duel with each other. Um, you know, the darkness is faded. Um, you know, and I have learned how to live successfully as a person who stutters. You know, the theme of the conference is what you want to take away with you and what you want to leave behind. You know, I I just want I want to embrace all the love 
that I felt that I do feel with being around you all. You know, and some people have been in my life a long time, others I just met this weekend, but I need that, I need that too. And going back home and filling up my gas tank every day, my emotional gas tank with all of you. You know, and the part that I want to leave you leave behind is any of self, any of self-doubt, any 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 self-doubt that I hold of what is ahead in the future. You know, that gotta stay in the moment. You know, and when those those doubts start to come in for all of us, for me or for you, that letting go and remembering the community and of connection, you know, because that's our key here, community and of connection. Um, so I really want to thank Anne and my wife. You know, I want to thank for my mom. Uh, she didn't know two months ago, I said her, but she learned, she learned, she learned, she learned, you know, and, she, she's a middle school teacher and she looks out for those little kids. Yeah, so let's let's get her back. Yeah, so let's let's get her back. Yeah, so let's get her back. Yeah, so my mom. She uh she took I remember the summer times so when my sweet teacher she did a summer program and I remember her driving me to it and uh I didn't want to go, but again, the ski teacher had, so I remember she let me play music and stuff in the beginning and do like 20 million other things before we did two minutes of speech therapy. But my mom would drive me there. You know, she, she would drive me there and wait, and she drove with, with my little brother. You know, my dad had passed away two years ago. I mean, he saw this part of me, so it's not like, you know, he knew I was okay. You know, and boy, does that make your parents happy. Okay. So I have two brothers and a sister, um, and they are they are absolutely amazing human beings. Um, you know the love I have for my family, and we've been through a lot together. But the love I have for my family and the respect that they have for me, and the love that they have for me—I mean, it's just—it's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, and I want to thank all of you here, you know, for being here today, for Lee, for John. For for Heather, Dr. McMeyer, GS, Jeff, you know, all of you, just to be in here, and all the kids, especially for those who are here for their first time. So uh, as we, um, guess what, we end today, just, just uh, you know, any little words of wisdom I have, is just be gentle with yourself, you know, be gentle with yourself. There's gonna be ups and downs, you know, Stop the beating yourself up because it only makes it worse, right? You know, and loving it, loving on yourself and each other. Um, so um, I am going to wrap it up. I um, yeah, I love you guys, and thank you again for this beautiful opportunity. And let's have a great rest of the day and evening. Heather would like to meet with the team leaders while everyone else is scheduled.